Hi, it's Chantelle here from Fiverrific. In this video, we are going to discuss supported spindles and what I personally think is a good choice for your first supported spindles. Now there's so much information out on the internet about what they are. And so I'm not gonna go into the history of the supported spindles. If you're after that information, hit Google. There are some fantastic resources that you'll be able to find there. I'll link a couple of things down below. Firstly, there's different types of supported spindles. There are Tibetan, Russian, Fangs, and that's just to name just three. There's just so many different types and there's variations on the types. And the individual wood turners and wood makers also have their own names for things. So they might call it something, but it's actually a different style of spindle. So it's always worth having a good look. So I personally think for a beginner that you should really head towards more the uh, the more Tibetan spindles. So these have got a cup on the bottom and a good distaff. I'm going to warn you straight away before you purchase your very first spindle and if you already have spindles you know exactly what I'm talking about. Spindles are like lollies. You cannot just get one. You will end up getting a lot because in the scheme of spinning tools and and the like they are inexpensive um, and it's so easy just to go, oh, that one's pretty and buy it off Etsy. For a beginner, I would recommend a Tibetan spindle in the weight range anywhere between 20 and 35 grams. Now, when it comes to support spindles, lighter is better to a degree. Now you need a little bit of weight in that bottom section, especially when you're learning, to help keep the momentum of the spin going. This is another little personal issue that I have. Some spindles come out with this little um, metal tip. Now I understand why the makers do it, but I don't like using those metal tipped spindles in my beautifully hand turned wooden bowls. And again, that's my personal preference. I really do prefer a completely wooden spindle because for me, part of spindling is about the tacticity. I don't think that's a word. The tactile nature of wood where you want to touch it and hold it. When it comes to the fiber that you're going to use for um, spindling, you really just need anything that has an open preparation, sort of like this, where it's really fluffy and open. It's going to be very easy to draft. Now, whether that is um, a roll ag or a bat or an open top or, um, you know, cotton or bison, any of the short fibers that <laughs> there's fluff everywhere now any of the short staple fibers are perfect for spindling so if you've got your hands on a little bag of yak or musk ox or something delicious like that spindling it is going to be amazing why do we support spindle over spinning on a wheel because i have spinning wheels but for me support spindling is really my relaxation craft because I personally don't sell spindles. I buy them from local makers and from from local stores around Australia. Generally, I have picked up a few um, Snyder spindles from Etsy. I really like his Turkish spindles, especially the little mini ones. They're very cute. I've probably got more than I need. Um, again, lollies, see? For me, I get tired. I work a lot of hours. I don't have you know, the best physicality and I've got busted knees. So sometimes I just need to sit and not treadle is really what it boils down to. I need to sit and not treadle. And so I sometimes just sit with my feet up. I put a bowl in my lap and I spindle while I watch TV. The other advantage of spindling is that I can't spin as fine on my wheel as I can on a spindle. So if I've got this evil delicious bag of musk ox that's 50 grams um, and I want it to go as far as it possibly can I will spindle it like there is no way I will do that on a wheel because you can make true cobweb on a spindle and also if I'm if I've got musk ox or kiviet or guanaco guacano oh my god don't say it Charlie don't say it. I cannot get it right ever. It's written in front of me and I still got it wrong. Okay. So if you've got delicious, delicious 
exclusive, hard to come by, exotic fiber, spindle it. It does take a bit longer. That means you get to play with it longer. I find spindling A, very relaxing and B, it's so easy on my body. Now, there is pretty well a 100% chance that there will never be a video of me drop spindling. Now, if we're very lucky, we'll find someone else that I can video doing it. But I don't drop spindle purely because I'm really, really lazy. Support spindling is really, really easy on your body. Um, you can keep your shoulders in a relaxed position. You can keep your spine in a nice relaxed position and you can sit pretty comfortably. Now, there are times when I'll sit at a table and spindle with the bowl on the table. There's times when I will spindle with my bowl on my lap. Okay, so let's have a quick talk about the bowls. So as I was talking about before, there are different types of bowls. There's the plain round bowl, or there's the bowl with the little divot. See here, it's just got like a little, okay. Now, when you're first beginning, I highly recommend a bowl with a divot, just because the spindle has got less chance of traveling when it's spinning. It just stays in the middle and spins. If you're using one of these bowls, it can actually slide all around the place. So either way, whichever bowl you have, use that. But if you're buying a bowl, maybe get one with a little divot to start with. Okay, so we're going with this Tibetan spindle. It's got like a little bowl on the end and a, and a point. I personally prefer a shorter stick, as I was saying before. I do every now and again get ones that are a bit, that are a bit longer. Um, but I don't tend to use them as much as the shorter ones. So let's get started. First thing we need is to get used to how we do this. So we don't even use fluff when we first start. You want to learn how to do, how to roll this in your fingers, just like this. So you push with your thumb and pull with your forefinger. So push and pull at the same time. And just practice that a few times until you're happy. Now you want to do it while it's standing up okay when we've got some fluff you just want a bit to start with you don't want it to get a chance to get all felty and gross in your hands and it will so i tend to create a little bit of a leader so i just pull a little out and give it a bit of twist myself like i'm a spindle Okay, just enough just to wrap around your spindle a couple of times to secure it. And just give it a twirl like that. And just sort of, you're just wrapping it over the top of itself just so it's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to push with my thumb and pull with my top finger. So push and pull at the same time and it creates the, the twirling. Okay. So push and pull and push, oops, hang on, and keep your fiber out. And push and pull and see how it's created a bit of twist there. We want to draw this out and the twist travels down. Okay, so push and pull, and push and pull. And as you build the twist into your hands, you need to keep drafting and push and pull. So you let it twist up, then park. Hold it in your hand and draft a bit. Let that out and the twist will travel. So push and pull and park and draft. And then you'll get a bit of yarn. You'll just bring that down. And just wind it onto here. Just get out of the way. This is called our cob. Okay. Push and pull. So you've got some good twist in there. Park it and draft it. Now, as you get better at this, you don't need to park and to draft. You can do long draw. But until you get the idea of the push and the pull and the park and the draft, and then park and draft, add the twist. So push and pull to add our twist. We've got a piece that's really long here now, so we're going to bring that up here and then park it and make our cob. 
and then we keep going until we've used up all the little piece in our hand. So push and pull, get some twist, park it, so hold it, pinch it and draft it and then let the twist travel through what we've parked. Oops, sorry. Then we add a bit more twist and we roll it onto the cob. Then we get some twist, build it up, pinch it, draft, let the twist travel into what we just drafted, add a bit more, then roll it into the cob. We just keep doing that over and over again until you run out of your little bit of fluff. Okay, then once you've got there, you butterfly, oops, I've got fluff on my finger. You butterfly it down. Whoops, I lost it. But we're basically going to wind it onto the bottom now. So we wind it on just like we did at the top and then we fill it. So you have it pulled out on tension and just wind this up and down just on this little bottom piece to start with. So all the bit that we had at the top we're rewinding, oops you can't see what I'm doing, we're rewinding it onto this bottom piece here. Okay, oops it's just going everywhere isn't it? And then when you're towards the end you wind it up the staff, pinch that, get your next bit of fluff, squish it on, just literally pinch it, twist it, get the twist built into it, pinch, park, draft, let it travel along. You want to make sure it's doubly good over your little join bits, you don't want them coming apart. So pinch, park and draft. And then again, wind your little cob here until you've got, you've used up all this bit of fluff, which I just got a little tiny piece this time. Oops. And see how fine we can get this? I mean, I could probably do this fine on a wheel. But I wouldn't be able to sit in a comfy chair and do it. Now I'm sure there's plenty of plenty of other videos that you'll be able to go and watch to help you refine your skills. This was just a mostly a getting you started and how to pick your spindle and as I was saying get yourself a good quality spindle, a bowl with a divot, maybe a Tibetan to start with and go from there and just keep spindling down below are some links to my preferred crack i mean spindle dealers love layer of the bearded dragon now i realized that i didn't have any layer of the bearded dragon spindles out today because they were all loaded waiting for me to ply off when i asked layer of the bearded dragon for their top tip for beginner spindlers they said practice practice and a bit more practice. And I agree, give yourself a chance. This is a new set of skills, even if you've spun before, even if you have drop spindled before, this is a different way to do things. And as usual, this is the way that I do it. Our winners for the Daenerys shawl prizes of the complete kits in both Colson and Tahiti were Thumbelina Spins and Random Crazy Insane. Congratulations. I will get those kits out to you as soon as I possibly can. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing. It's time for you to fill your universe with fibre fun.